uh, bless those who are still on their way, grant them travel mercies and safety, and uh, may you just uh, fill our hearts with your love and your joy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, our first song is going to be hymn number 92 from our Seventh-day Adventist hymnal. This is my father's world. Sister Lizelle. This is the older version of Crystal. <laughs> so Crystal is coming. Um, welcome to our Sabbath school. So those who are watching us online and those who are here, welcome to our Sabbath school. You know that today is the fifth Sabbath of the month and it's the youth Sabbath. So I would like to welcome everyone. Um, to the youth Sabbath and not the young at hearts. Of course, we're here to support our youth. So our verse for today is that in John 11, 25, 26, it says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? So let us all stand as we 
greet each other a happy sabbath give everyone a hug and those who are watching us will give you a virtual hug Right, now that we're all up, awake, and have our blood pumping, let's remain standing as we begin to sing our opening hymn, number 518, Standing on the Promises. Promise. 
Good morning, happy Sabbath. The scripture reading for today will be found in Psalm chapter 27, verse 14. And it says, wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you made. Please help us wait for you and be strong and take our hearts courage yes help us wait for the lord in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. you may all be seated uh, at this time we'll have special music by sister ria Oh, he is risen 
Thank you, Sister Rhea, for that beautiful rendition. Uh, man, it just touches my heart to see such young people be able to be up here and praise the Lord. You know, the word of God says, out of the mouth of babes, you have perfected praise. So uh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Um, at this time, we'll be hearing our mission story. So let us go and hear how, um, I think in the, in the city of Kathmandu, how the Lord has been working over there in India. You know, being here in America, we often take education for granted, not just education, but the facilities in which we receive it. Uh, you know, not having asbestos-filled ceilings, hopefully not having asbestos-filled ceilings. Um, so uh, may God bless you as you prepare to give your uh, offering today. We will not be collecting it right here, right now, but as we break into our respective groups, we will be collecting the, the, the secretaries will be taking attendance and collecting the offertories there. So at this time, let us go ahead and break for our uh, lesson reviews. Uh, Brother James' group is going to be here in the sanctuary. Bro uh, Brother Roger Zern's group is going to be uh, right out here to the, to the right, my left, your right. 
Um, the children will be upstairs, and we will be reconvening here at 10.50. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, if I can encourage uh, everyone to come a little closer to sort of come together here, make it look like a small group, you know. Okay, I hope everyone enjoyed uh, studying the lesson uh, this week. Uh, we uh, have an opening prayer, and then we'll, we'll get started with the lesson. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, uh, we are so thankful, Lord, that you brought us here today uh, to study your word, Father. So help us, Lord, as we go through uh, this lesson, our, our last lesson of this quarter, Lord. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Uh, amen. So. Today's lesson is entitled, uh, Wait on the Lord, Wait on the Lord. And our memory text is from Psalm 27 and, and verse 14, and it states, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. So, I'm going to start out by asking you guys, uh, what, what does that mean to you, you know, individually, to wait on the Lord? Oh, uh, I didn't realize we didn't have our max yet. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Now. If anyone would uh, want to expound on it. Okay, the question was, uh, what does that mean to you as an individual to wait on the Lord? There you go. So, I would say to put my faith and trust in God. Okay. Right? Um, there are often times when our time and God time does not necessarily match up. Right? <laughs> That's so true. And uh, I know that 
it's a challenge at times for some persons to wait because sometimes we're in a society and an era where whatever we want, we want it now. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And often time, the Lord is saying to us, wait, it is not the right time. Mm-hmm. So it's a matter of building that faith to say, I will wait on God's timing. Right. Okay, that is good. That is good. You want to say something, brother? So what we go through, mm-hmm. we kind of interject it into these verses in, in our understanding, so it kind of changes from day to day. <laughs> yeah. it, it does. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's something that's going on right now that fits this perfectly. I have a friend, I always call him Naik, but it's Naik, mm. and he's from India. Okay. Like our mission story this morning. Mm-hmm. Well, Naik and three other pastors went to Nepal, which is northern India, which is out of the state that they go to, mm-hmm. uh, to preach. They were asked to come and preach, so they went there and preached. Okay. And then after the, the, you know, the preaching, uh, they were asked to go to this lady's house and pray for her. Mm-hmm. Well, being from another state, they didn't know all the, the laws, and they were arrested. Uh, You're not allowed to go proselytize without getting a license in that state. Uh, okay. This was in February. So these four men have been in jail, and they went to, to the judge, and the judge wouldn't release them, so they appealed it to a higher court. Mm-hmm. Well, this past Thursday, they got to go before the higher court. Well, three ministers were released. Ah, okay. But Naik is not. He's got to sit in jail for another month before he can see another judge. And so me and other people, we're trying to find out, well, what is the bail? We can Mm -hmm. get him out at least, you know? Mm -hmm. No bail. So Naik is sitting in jail waiting on the Lord. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So what it means to him would, would, would not be the same as me sitting here today. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, yes, go ahead. Yes, on that time of wait, then, um, it, it means the way that, in a way that, be how to be moving. Mm. Not just sitting down waiting, no. You have to move, continue on going, because if we sit down, we will drop sleep. <laughs> okay. And it would happen. It would happen like the ten, ten virgins. Okay. So we have to put that, you know, well together. That mm-hmm. by within, mm-hmm. there's so much to do. We could mm. go and plant the seed, you know, around our neighborhood, our community, our families, and everywhere else. Mm. So mm. be careful with this within, because it means all, always, and you know, if I was wake and the other five was sleeping mm. jesus came so it's the same way today with us that's not you know waste any time mm. because time is very you know it's very short okay jesus second coming so let's embrace that time for fullness absolutely not sleeping <laughs> absolutely okay so uh, I guess we, we have established that, that waiting can mean different things to different people and depending on situation and, and, and a lot of other things. Um, um, ha- have you ever, any one of you ever uh, personally had an indication where you felt like you had to wait on the Lord for, for something uh, special to happen in your life or something that would change the situation in your life and, and you decided uh, I, I'm going to give this to the Lord and, 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 and wait on him to handle this situation any of you ever oh okay <laughs> okay and I've been waiting on state form to come through for me uh-huh. He will. They will give the give the the workers permission. Mm-hmm. Okay, do the work, but they don't give them the the funds so that they can start the work. And mm-hmm. I, I've been calling this, calling that, but nothing is being done. 
the whole, there's a big hole in my dining room all the way back. Mm -hmm. the, the furniture, everything messed up from, from yeah. the water coming downstairs. But then I said, Lord, I said, I'm just going to leave it to you. Mm. you. You take control of this. And that's what I did. Now, yesterday they called me and he came out. Now he's going to do the carpet. So thanks be to God, something is being done. But mm -hmm. I learned mm. just to wait. Just don't worry. Just turn it over in God's hands. And uh, he'll take care of it. And God is with Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Uh, Go ahead, young lady. Yes, it's very similar. You know, I came here to Jacksonville recently, and my plans, this, 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 that, and almost three months, and my plans haven't been the way I, but I praise his name this morning that mm -hmm. I acknowledge. Oh, I say yes. <laughs> I was going on my own. Mm -hmm. It haven't been going my own. Now, is for you, it's for you, oh Lord, for mm. you to do it on your time. But just please give me that acceptance and give me that peace. So, you know, that's it. It's in his plans, not mine. Mm. I, I thank him that he gave me that. It's the weight. Yeah, okay. Def definitely. Um, today would have been a day that culminates the last day of a massive evangelistic campaign we're having in a place called Yalas in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the last four weeks, you know, they're out there on their tent and they're preaching and the Bible instructors are out there in the field and they're going day after day. So for the first week, nobody was there for baptism. Mm. You know, the second week, the same. Mm -hmm. And, you know, persons start talking about, you know, we waste so much money to come put a tent here and to have this evangelistic campaign, not understanding that things happen in God's time. That's true. Right? That's true. Uh -huh. And uh, just last week, 50 persons gave their lives to the Lord in oh. that campaign. Oh. Right? Okay. And today is another baptism with about 25. Oh, okay. Today. Uh -huh. And it's just a matter of praying, leaving it in God's hand. It is mm -hmm. not our doing. God mm -hmm. is the one who changed people. God is the one who changed hearts. Because oftentimes we feel like, oh, I, I talk to you about Jesus and I bring this Jesus to you and introduce him to you. Why are you not changing? Mm. Not understanding that mm -hmm. you and I have no impact on a person's life. It's the Holy Spirit that actually does the work. That's true. So oftentimes it's an indication for us to just wait on God's timing. Absolutely. Uh, go, go ahead, Zach. Yeah, just to add to that, um, another observation that I've had before is that we often look at baptism as the culmination of soul winning. We think that, you know, just because we baptize them, that we dunk them in there, that now that they're saved. But we need to remember that soul winning is not just an event, but it's on a spectrum. That even when we, do, when we do have evangelistic series like that, when we do have these other events, even though we might not see the fruit rep, reaped right then at that time, Mm -hmm. But who knows, the things that were said might sit there to fester and germinate and mm. maybe down the road or whatever, they will give their life to Christ. But yeah. we don't always necessarily be able, uh, have to be there to see it happen before our eyes. We just need to mm. trust and have faith that the Holy Spirit will work um, based on the words that was preached and given. That's true. That's so true. And, and uh, the Holy Spirit uh, has to have time to work on people. And, and also, a lot of times, uh, I guess... When you, when you baptize someone, uh, I, I'll give you an example. Um, when we went on our missionary trip uh, uh, to uh, the Philippines, right? Okay, so at, after the series of meetings and everything was over, we baptized just like around 150 people, right? There were just lines and lines coming down, and, and, and we had like maybe 20 pastors in, in, in this spring, we did it out of spring, you know, just baptizing people, baptizing people. And, uh, and everybody was just like, you know, praise be to God and everything, you know. But the thing that a lot of the people that was there didn't realize is there are a team of Bible workers that had been giving Bible studies to these wow. people three months before we even came to the country. And so, you know, the field was ripe, you know, mm -hmm. so to speak. And so uh, a lot of times more goes into it than we could see, you know, uh, and the Holy Spirit has worked on people. And, uh, and, and it's just amazing how 
people were, you know, maybe patting the pastors on the back, you know, what a great job. You guys, look at all these people, you know. We have nothing to do with it. <laughs> it was all those Bible workers before we even came into the country, you know, that, that got all these people and, and, and got them ready uh, for baptism. Okay, uh, yes, sir. So yesterday while I was at work, the homeowner came out and started talking about Easter. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a, to me an open door to start talking about <laughs> <laughs> about God. Okay. You know? And uh, so she was talking, up in, and we got to the, to the subject of salvation. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, I don't really go to a church. And I'm, I'm not really religious. I'm more spiritual. And uh, I, I believe that anybody that's good, you know, gets to go to the good place. Yeah, yeah. And I says, ma'am, I says, being good, there's no one good enough to, to, to be saved. You know, to, to, to get yeah. eternal life. She got red in the face, became angry. Mm. I mean, very, very angry. And I was so glad. Because <laughs> that means she's going to think about it for a while. Yeah. And the more yeah. she thinks about it, that gives an open door to God to work on her. Because when I told her, it says, no one's good enough. Only through Jesus Christ can you be saved. Yeah. That's when she started getting angry. Oh. <laughs> but that was a good sign. Yeah. That means she's going to think about it for days. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's so true. That is so true. Okay, uh, we, we're going to move on to uh, Sunday's lesson, uh, the call of waiting. And um, um, in the first paragraph of, of, of that day's lesson, it talks about the stress of waiting and how waiting could be so stressful to some people. Uh, um, I remember years ago, I, I lived in Miami, and uh, there was a lot of things in Miami uh, as far as getting licenses and stuff like that. When you went to do it, you had to stand in this really long line, and, and you would be there, I don't know, it would take most of your day just to accomplish whatever you were trying to accomplish. And so it, it, it got to be so bad that people would pay people to stand in line for them. And they would stand in line, and then when they would get like two, three people, you know, they, they would call that person and say, okay, you, you, you're almost up, and that person would come, you know, rather than stand in line. So uh, that just shows you our attitude about waiting. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're in a fast society, fast food, fast this. We want everything right now. Okay, so waiting waiting what, what what what's your stance on the call of waiting and is waiting really stressful to you and in and, 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 and biblical terms and, and put that into your personal life also because uh I, i've been going to church all my life since a little boy right and, and from a little boy uh i've always heard uh jesus is coming soon you know and, and so, as a, you know, now, what, 70 some years later, right? Okay, so we still, we've been waiting, right? And I'm just talking about in our personal lives. I'm not talking about. So wh wh what I'm saying is, what do you think about waiting on the Lord? And is there any stress in your life concerned with that biblical waiting? Go ahead. To kind of generalize this a little bit, I've always had issues with waiting. If <laughs> okay. I had to go wait on my parents when they're in the grocery store, if I had to wait in the car, yeah. it would be terrible <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. I don't see anything happening. I see no progress. <laughs> Compared to if I'm waiting on them while I'm walking with them or seeing mm -hmm. something, I have something to keep my mind occupied to entertain me. Now, I feel like the same situation can be applied spiritually. If we're waiting right. on the Lord, mm -hmm. not doing anything, mm -hmm. yes, it can be stressful. That's yes, it, it can cause some grief. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you know, we're told to wait on the Lord. Now, what do waiters do? Waiters serve. If right. we're actually actively serving for the benefit of others while we're waiting, uh -huh. it would not only make our time fly by faster, we'll uh -huh. be able to have food in which, we know, uh, which <laughs> others know not of. And yeah. it, it, will just, it, it does something to your spirit when you actually serve for others. And um, long story short, we've we got to be active. <laughs> yeah, we got to be active. True. Brother Carr. So to me, waiting on the Lord was the main 
thing of my own personal conversion. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I had to give up everything. Oh, I okay. I had to give up myself. I had to give up everything and just completely rely on him for everything. Mm -hmm. That's what my conversion was. Oh, okay. Okay. So waiting on the Lord became a, well, there's no other options here. <laughs> you know, I, I mess up everything and I'm not going to uh, try to do this. This is not for me to do. This is for him to do, you know, and it just, waiting was no longer stressful. Oh, okay. I trusted him. Uh huh. So when I waited on him, it was, I was putting my trust in him in his own time. Oh, okay. That was a big, huge part of my conversion. Without it, I could not have done it. Oh, okay. That's good. A young lady? Yes. Waiting is a virgin. Mm -hmm. I remember like brother here, my son passed away 13 years ago. Uh, he would take me to the store mm. and he would say, I'm not waiting. I'm leaving. When you're ready, call me back. <laughs> I do that. And when he see me coming up, leaving the store to go towards the car with mm -hmm. empty hands, he would say, you see, <laughs> it was a good thing I didn't wait because you went in, you spent the time there, and you still didn't bought anything. So waiting is something, you know, please keep me in your prayers because sometimes I could get out of patience too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You, you know, sometimes do, do, do we ever uh, use that as an excuse? I, I, I know I did. Uh, I, I remember... Um, like I say, I, I grew up in the church, but uh, there, there come a time in my life uh, when I became an adult, I decided the church wasn't for me, you know, so, so, so I left the church. Okay, so, man, it, it was years, years later before I started attending again. And as I started attending again, uh, my wife and, and, and other people at the church were, brother, you need to join, you need to join. And, and, and I would always tell them, well, the Lord will let me know when it's time for me to join. You know, that was my excuse. You know, I just, I, I just didn't want to join at that time. You know, and so th that was uh, an excuse. Well, God will tell me when it's time for me to join, right? And so uh, I, I used that excuse because I was, I wasn't ready. I wasn't really ready to join. And so the, the Holy Spirit, you know, works on us sometimes when we don't even realize it. And so the spirit was working on me because, you know, you know, and I was thinking about, you know, things I should do and, and, and why, you know, I was making excuses why I shouldn't join, rather, you know, rather than join, you know. Well, I'm not ready, you know, my life, ain't, my life's not right. I'm not doing, you know, living like I should. And, and when I do, that's when I'll join, right? Okay, so one day I was riding and, and, and I was turning the radio in my car, you know. And as I'm channel surfing here, I came across a Christian radio station. And the song that was playing was, You Were Born to Serve Me. And man, for some reason, that song just hit me really hard, you know. And I'm listening to it, and I listened to the whole song and listened to the words of the song and everything. And, and it was then when I'm just like, you know, may, maybe he is talking. You know, the Holy Spirit had been talking to me all that time, but I was ignoring it. <laughs> you know how you could just, your mind's not ready. But there comes a time when you are open to the Spirit. And, and that's the time when you know, and that's when I knew that it was time. And that's when, for me, the wait was over. And uh, I, I'm, I'm different for as the waiting thing. With me, the waiting is, it's not that it's been a long time and I've still been waiting. It's once you start serving God, it's just like, I'm worried now that we don't have enough time. Mm. <laughs> you, know, you know, to bring uh, family members and loved ones that I, I have to bring them to God, I'm worried now that do I have enough time to reach the people that I want to reach in my personal life and, and, and to reach people that I need to meet uh, in my uh, public uh, ministry. So, But anyhow, uh, moving on along. Um,
Um, and I just want to read this paragraph in, in that lesson, in that day's lesson. It says, perhaps one of the greatest stresses in life is the stress of waiting. Uh, no matter who we are, uh, where we live, uh, what our station in life is, uh, we all at times must wait for things. Uh, from waiting in line on a store, and we talked about that, waiting for medical uh, prognoses, uh, we wait, and which we don't always like doing. Uh, we don't always like waiting, but we wait on things. But sometimes the things in our personal life that we wait on, uh, we find it more uh, acceptable um, to wait on those things than we do uh, waiting on God. Uh, and uh, I'd just like to know your opinion on that. Why do we sometimes uh, find it more acceptable to wait on earthly things, things that we have, rather than waiting on, on, on spiritual type things? Uh, uh, go ahead, young lady. In my personal opinion, I think it is because, well, the, the trust that I have in God uh -huh. and the fact that he knows and he sees before it has even happened. Uh -huh. So, and then, okay, you're praying for this and you're praying and you're praying and it's like, oh my gosh, the prayers are not going nowhere, <laughs> but you know, they're just like right at the rooftop. So it just yeah. kind of brings about a little bit of impatience. Mm -hmm. And then I think that, um, Sometimes when we get up and we, all right, we can't wait any longer. Mm. We try to do it ourselves. That's it. And That's then, it, uh -huh. it, okay, so for, I think, for instance, if God says next week, we can't wait until next week, but we get up and we start doing it ourselves, and then it just push it back way further. Yeah. So I think sometimes when we get up and we want to do something ourselves instead of waiting on God, mm -hmm. it pushes it back. Because it should have been next week or it should have been last week, but because, you know, self got in the way, yeah. it pushes yeah. it back. Yeah, it does. Um, if I could add something, I think the question that you asked earlier about waiting, for me personally, I think it's, um, you know, when you just, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm trying to find a word, but I can't find it. Um, I'm trying to find a word, but I mm. can't find it. You, okay, so you ask something about, you know, uh, why is waiting significant in our spiritual life? I think it keeps us on our toes. Or for me personally, mm -hmm. it keeps me on my toes waiting for God because then I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. if he comes tomorrow, mm -hmm. am I going to be a part of heaven? You know uh, what I mean? Yeah. If he comes next week, will I be ready then? Mm -hmm. So it keeps us on our toes. Well, personally, I think mm -hmm. it keeps me on my toes. And he mentioned something earlier as well when he said that mm -hmm. if we're serving, it kind of helps us a lot. Mm -hmm. If you get up and we're doing good, it really does help us because it takes our mind off of that. And we're just like, we're doing what we're supposed to do, knowing that when he gets here, we'll be ready because you That's made right. the decision a long time ago to mm -hmm. make heaven your home. But then you said, you know, we hear he's coming back for so many years, but he has not returned as yet. So <laughs> yeah, do we just give yeah. up or do we continue waiting? Uh -huh. He said that we, um, we serve while we wait. Good. Uh -huh. We That's do true. that. Mm -hmm. Right? But at the same time, then there's self. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think self get in the way of our life a lot. Mm -hmm. it like does. a lot. It does. Especially it does. when you're in a world where... Um, spirituality is not promoted and you mm. have to and you find yourself having to stand really really firm on your belief uh, so yeah. um, well that's my two cents anyways okay yeah uh, someone once told me that uh, um, that I should I should treat my body as if it has to last forever but I should live my life as if Christ was coming back tomorrow. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, that those, those self gets in the way a lot. And, and, and it always seems as if, I know it's with me, and I, I don't know about you guys, but it always seems as if a lot of times God is my plan B. <laughs> 
you know, first, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to try, you know, I try to do things myself first. And then when it don't work, then, you know, I want to pray about it, right? So I, I try to change that in my life and make God my first, you know, my first motion. Could it be that you take the um, work without faith out of context at times? Mm -hmm. You know, when we make God our plan B, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this first because, you know, once God sees that you're working towards something, mm -hmm. then he'll, gonna, he'll show up and mm -hmm. we'll get it done. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to him first, we, okay, I'm going to start first and then I'll go to God about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You know, do we take the, do we at times take the um, work without faith yeah. out of context? You know what I mean? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and it's basically in, in, in my situation, it's just like, uh, you, you ever you ever heard the, the phrase or in the Bible it tells us to pray without ceasing? Yeah. Well, I pray about everything. <laughs> I, I pray about everything. And, and sometimes, you know, it, I'm going to show you how Satan works. When I do put God as my plan B, it's because sometimes I pray so much and I pray about everything. Sometimes it was just like, don't bother God with that. Uh, you, you guys ever heard that thought? Had that thought? Don't don't bother God with that. But you should bother Him with everything, right? But you know that's just that's just me. But anyhow, uh, go ahead. Uh, kind of touching base on what you were talking about with the faith and works. Yes, I think sometimes we do do that um, in terms of like. I'll give you an example. I don't know if it happens here specifically in this church, but uh -huh. in our Wednesday night Bible uh, Bible prayer meetings and stuff when we were talking about this you know oftentimes we'll go and we'll say okay well this person looks like they have that talent let's go ahead and appoint them here or there or there mm -hmm. but oftentimes we didn't stop and wait and pray for the holy spirit and say lord who do you want us to choose not just what we see by our sight but you know that in terms of uh you know waiting we don't wait necessarily on god for all things in that aspect like okay lord this looks like a great job i'm just going to go and jump for it or do we stop and say okay well let me think about that lord mm -hmm. is this the job that you want for me you know, we don't often put ourselves down like that to, to, to lift him up in that way. But again, I also think it comes into terms of both where do we have our mind? You mm -hmm. know, we often, you know, get impatient when we're thinking about spiritual things because oftentimes our mind are so engrossed in what we see here. You mm -hmm. know, we haven't mm -hmm. seeked and set the things that are above. You know, the, it, the to, at least for me personally, sometimes you hear it so much that it just becomes heady ethereal knowledge that, you know, it just seems sometimes afar off. Sometimes it seems like it's right there. Sometimes it seems like it's just so out of your reach. Yeah, but, um, that's so true. That's I feel so like true. the more times we just put ourselves down when we decrease to allow him to increase, he will show up and show out in our lives if mm -hmm. we just let him. We just need to be able to get out of our own way. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, uh, Brother Carr. So... We have examples of waiting on the Lord and not waiting on the Lord uh -huh. in mm -hmm. the Bible. Specifically, I was thinking of Ezekiel. Mm. Mm. So Ezekiel was taken, you know, to the captives, but then he was taken up by the hair and brought back to Jerusalem to show him what caused the apostasy of Israel. You know, there was a hole in there, and he dug in, and he saw the 70 elders, the ancients, mm -hmm. which was actually... The 70 that uh, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, mm -hmm. told him as judges, okay? And also it's the same number that the Sanhedrin are. Mm. So they're just an extension of that. Anyway, these men began, began they were the judges. They were not the, the, the priests. That's a couple verses over. Mm -hmm. But uh, their reasoning for the abominations, if I could read it, is found in uh, Ezekiel 8. Okay. Uh, I'll just do a brief one. Uh, verse twelve. Then said he, then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancient of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chamber of his imagery, mm. for they say the Lord seeth not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. Mm. They mm. had given up on waiting on the Lord, mm. and they started becoming idol worshipers mm. and pagan worshipers. Mm. They were in the right place. They were on the right day, but they were worshiping the wrong thing. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, 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 that should give us some pause for thought, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should. It should. Because, uh, because, because the next group mm -hmm. were the priests. Yep. 
Yep. They were all doing the same thing for the same reason. They mm -hmm. were not waiting on the Lord. Yep, absolutely. So uh, I, I'm going to ask you guys a question that's at the bottom of today's lesson. And, and that question is, if, if you have been praying for something, uh, giving it uh, to the Lord, and, and he hasn't answered that prayer yet, uh, uh, how does that affect your, your waiting when, when just like uh, there's a situation in your life? You've been praying that that situation gets rectified, right? But, but it hasn't. And, and so how does that affect your waiting? Or do you continue to wait? Uh, uh, anyone? Okay, go ahead. So I hear a lot of times when people pray, they're like, if it be thy will. Yeah. Okay. When we, when we pray, we should know his will before we pray. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we shouldn't say, if it be thy will. If we know him, we know what his will is. Yeah. Does he want everybody to be healed? When he is on this earth, he healed everybody that would, mm. would have mm. faith in him. Mm. We know his will. Yeah. It is our lack of faith mm. that is not getting the prayers answered. Mm. Mm. Just, as it, just as people would not be healed while he was here for lack of faith. Mm. When mm. we pray mm. this, when we pray, we shouldn't say, if it be thy will, but thy will be done, because we know mm. what his mm. will is. He, mm. he, he wants good for us. He wants healing for us. Mm -hmm. You know? It's, yeah. it is us that, is, that has the problem not him <laughs> but that's always the case now but there, 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 there's, some, there's some cases where you actually don't know and I mean and, 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 and because I have asked that myself uh, just like uh, you're, you're, you're in a position at work and, and they offer you a promotion you know and, and you want that promotion you're going to get paid more money and everything but, but is that promotion part of what God has in plan for you, you know. And so you, you do have to ask sometimes if it's your will, you know, let this be done, you know, or, or, or not because a lot of times uh, you don't know, you just don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, you want to say something, young man? Uh, we need a, a mic over here, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I was going to mention on the idea of a persistent prayer and uh -huh. the setting of waiting. Uh, I think you see uh, numerous examples of this okay. in the Bible where mm -hmm. something is brought to God multiple times. You know, mm. you can see uh, uh, Elijah praying for rain and waiting for the crowd. He pays multiple times. Servant goes and looks. They go and look. They go and <laughs> yeah, look. They go and yeah, look. Yeah. And then finally they see the small cloud side of the man's hand, and he knows it. He knows mm -hmm. it right then. He grabs and he leaves. Um, or he starts running. But... Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, there's, there's also this idea, like, sometimes we, we pray for things uh, and, uh, you know, God's will for, for how he wants us to live our life. I think, I think we have an idea of the how mm -hmm, a lot mm -hmm. of times. Uh, I think there are sometimes, you know, specific questions that we may not, like, fully know where, where it's, like, it's a uh, morally neutral mm. topic. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned the idea of a promotion. Mm -hmm. Like um, God tells you how he wants to live your life. He tells you what kind of jobs are okay and not okay. And the vast mm -hmm. majority are, are all right, right? Mm -hmm. But you, you know certain jobs are not okay. But if, right. if you're in those going one way or the other, you know, I, I could see leaving that to the Lord. And then, you know, I, I think sometimes when we pray, you know, we, we wait. And if God doesn't answer, we just say, oh, mm -hmm. well, you know, I'm just going to do the best I can and mm -hmm. hope it works out. And um, mm -hmm. I do think that, though, God wants us to be persistent with us bringing it to him. And I think sometimes the lack of an answer is a way to, to draw us to look uh, introspectively at ourselves and at, you know, is there some sin that is keeping us from getting that answer, that clarity that, that we mm -hmm. feel like we should have. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see examples of uh, the Israelites, uh, like Zach had mentioned, where they went on and they did stuff about prayer. Like when uh, mm -hmm. Joshua first entered the uh, Canaan after Jericho, they had the city of A or I, um, and they sent the 3,000 men without consulting God. And, and, they, and even though it was a small city, it, re it rebuffed them, and it was, it was a complete failure of a battle. And the idea was is that they, they, they knew it, they were thinking about God, but there, there came this small thing, this thing they didn't need to bring up to God. Mm. And they did mm. it anyhow. 
Mm, okay, that is good. That's good. Uh, 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 you want to say something, young man? Yes. Um, just drop my mind to Second Corinthians 12 mm -hmm. and verse 8. I think 8 through to 11, there about, or 8 to 10. You know, it's a concerning this thing I pleaded with the Lord three times that I might that it might depart from me. Mm -hmm. And he said mm -hmm. to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in mm -hmm. weakness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This mm -hmm. was Paul here talking about pleading with God to, for, for some infirmities that he was having to, to be removed. Right? Mm -hmm. But constantly the Lord answer was no. Right? Let it be. My strength will be made perfect in your weakness mm -hmm. or in whatever mm -hmm. infirmities that mm -hmm. you might be experiencing. Mm -hmm. The truth is that there are times when we go to God to ask for something that that God who knows the end from the beginning know that it is better to to let that be. It is better not to respond to you in the positive. Right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. maybe I respond to you in the positive, it will somehow cause your faith to depart from you. Mm -hmm. And by you having this thing, then what will happen is that my strength will be made perfect in your weakness. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why, as Christians, we should let thy will be done. Mm -hmm. There are times, mm -hmm. right? There are times when we do not know what the will of God is. That's we true. know the will that we want. We, right. know, we, know, we know the direction that we want it to go in based mm -hmm. on our limited knowledge, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes God's will is that remain with that infirmity or mm -hmm. stay in this position or mm -hmm. this prayer, the answer is no because mm -hmm. you'll be better off for it in the long run, knowing, him knowing the end from the beginning. Right, right. Uh, go, go ahead, young lady. Yes. Um, personal experience. Mm. that I had seen prayer, my prayer has answered right away. And another time I waited for 11 years. Mm. Yes, sir. Church praying, you know, individual, I'm praying myself. And it came through one Sabbath afternoon like now. You know, I got the call and that was it. Thank God. Praise him. Mm. And Many times we said, you know, spoken to young men back home about, you know, buying and selling the property. Mm -hmm. And it didn't make true. And he said, but he's not a Christian. He said, and we prayed so much. And nothing didn't happen. And I'm, as a Christian, I praise God. I told him, yes, the prayer was answered. And it mm. was no. Mm. But it was answered. Mm. He know, and he said, but you, let, you made me think about this. Said, yeah, it was answer. It's not his time. It wasn't my time. It's not God's time until he wants that property to be, you know, passed mm -hmm. to another owner. His time. Mm -hmm. But the prayer was answered. No, nope, not yet. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll go ahead. So, in James 1, 6 through 8. Mm-hmm. He talks about prayer, but I think you have to get the context to get the, the verse right, because if you take it out of context, it could go in all different directions. Okay. So I'm going to read the verse, and I think everybody will know what the context is here. Okay. It says, but when you pray, you must believe and not doubt at all. Mm. Whoever doubts is like a wave in the sea that is driven and blown about by the wind. Mm. Mm. I believe that the context is knowing the will of God when you pray. Mm. You know, sometimes, okay, that, that, that's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. But as, as humans, sometimes we know the will of God, but yet and still knowing that you serve an all-powerful God, sometimes you still ask, even though you know. And I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, even... Even in the garden, Jesus asked the Lord if this cup could be taken away from me. He knew God's will, right? He knew it couldn't. You know, he knew it. Well, it could have been, but he knew what it mean if it was, you know. So, you know, 
I, I, I don't feel that there's anything wrong with asking for God's will, you know, you know, let your will, you know, take precedence over what I'm asking for. Uh, okay, um, we need to move on along here. Uh, <laughs> I, I want to ask you guys about a uh, piece of a weaned child, and, and that's, y'all know what it means for a child to be weaned of something, right? Especially mothers. Y'all know about weaning a baby, right? Y'all mothers ain't saying that. Y'all, we, we don't have any mothers in here? Okay. You, you ever wean a child? Okay. Was that, was that a good thing or a bad thing or how, you know? Y'all not going not gonna to elaborate, huh? Oh, <laughs> that's <how> you are. <laughs> All right, go ahead. So right now, my grandson is being weaned. Okay. And at the same time, I have a little calf I've been bottle feeding that's also being weaned. Oh. So I've got a little bit of experience right now about the noise they make when they're weaned and the quietness <laughs> after they're weaned. So okay. I think that this could be added to that as well. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, I'm going to ask you guys, uh, uh, as, as children of, of God, uh, what do you think we need to be weaned of as, as we're waiting? Uh, just, you know, we, there's no right and no wrong answers. You know, just, just well, what, what do you think? Uh, 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 go ahead, young lady. Uh-huh. I think that is um, something that each person will have to look at for okay. themselves individually. Mm-hmm. What is it that is holding me back personally that I need to wean myself off of? Oh, okay. okay. Um, I, I'm not sure if it can be generalized. Okay. You know, I think it could be, mm-hmm. but I think for the majority, it may mm-hmm. be something that you have to look at right. um, within self to say, what is it that is, you know, uh, that has become or is being mm-hmm. a hindrance for me as it relates to waiting on the Lord? Okay. It's something you said earlier that, that comes to mind. That's the reason I hope. Uh, you said something earlier about, um, about uh, one of the things that, that, got in your way was the the human frailty of selfishness you know and and and, and we all <laughs> we all suffer from that from point to point in our lives and 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 I, and I think that's one of the things that that we need to wean ourselves off you know as we wait on the god is that's the selfishness that we have and and the uh and the the inability of us to, to wean ourselves from the sins of this world, you know. Um, but that, you know, I, I'm pretty sure you guys got, got something you'd like to say about that. Okay. I know that my grandson and that calf both don't want to be weaned. <laughs> I know. They will that's fight true. against it. That's where all the noise comes from. Yep, that's so true. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, that, that weaned child, you know, from a mother is a powerful image, it tells us. And um, you were talking about um, uh, the quietness of, uh, of uh, okay, the quietness of, a, of, a, of, a, of, of the situ- your situation, brother, you know, and, and how, uh, okay, okay, and how it uh, gets loud and so as far as that, as far as quietness, what, what, what do you think about spiritual quietness? Just like as we are waiting on God and we're trying to wean ourselves from, from the, uh, the pit holes, the potholes and, and all this stuff, uh, uh, just the noise in our lives, you know, in our day-to-day lives going forward. How, how do you think we can quiet that noise if we sincerely uh, wait on the Lord. Uh, okay. uh, I think, or I, I, I don't know if this is what you meant, but this is at least what I think of when you talk about the topic is that quietness is necessary to consider, <clears throat> um, you know, God in, okay. in, your, in your life. Is, is it on? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's on. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm saying that uh, 
quietness is, is necessary to consider God in your life, to remove the distractions. You know, we are in an age where we have a constant stimulation and attention span is decreasing and people are getting more and more <laughs> dependent yeah. on media interaction and things like that. And, uh, and a lot of people, they say they, they, they go crazy, get depressed when it becomes quiet. But yet, mm. when you're talking about God, um, you know, you can, you can even see, uh, like, in, in the Old Testament, it talks about Elijah with the windstorm coming in, the loud thundering, and then, but it was a still, small voice. Like, God is coming in the quiet times when you can consider yourself, think back on your life and how you want it to be in alignment with his will. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think quietness is necessary. Mm, mm. Okay. Uh, I was told it's time for us to... <laughs> Okay, I got three minutes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so um, um, I want someone to um, to read uh, Matthew's uh, 18 and, and verse 3. Matthew 18 and verse 3. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and read it. Um, and it says, And said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. And, and, and that goes into being weaned like a child, being weaned from certain things that this world uh, just grabs us and, and it looks like it's so enticing and stuff, how we have to wean ourselves from those things and, and, and try to uh, live our lives um, uh, more concentrating on, on heavenly things, you know, things that, that's going to last because um, uh, this is um, maybe, I, I, I'll put it this way. Uh, you, you guys know we're, we're on a journey, right? And we're, we're journeying through this life here. But, but this is not our final destination. Like I say, you know, we, we're on this journey. And once we get to our final destination, uh, which I, I guess all of our destination should be heaven, right? <laughs> That's what we want our destination to be, right? And, and as we travel, just like when you're traveling uh, on a highway, you, you, you're going you're gonna to have sometimes detours. Sometimes you're going you're gonna to take a wrong turn. Sometimes it might even get lost. But anyhow, we're hoping that uh, everybody could get back on that right path, on that highway that leads to heaven, and, and hopefully we're going to be able to wait and, uh, and, and do the things that we need to do uh, so we could uh, all get there and be together on that, on that wonderful morning. I, I hope to see you all uh, as we are floating up in the air. Don't pass me, though. You know, don't don't flow too fast. Yeah. But any, <laughs> I hope to I hope to see all you guys there, and uh, and uh, we're gonna close, and um, and uh, we're gonna have uh, uh, the conclusion uh, to this lesson, and uh, I'm gonna pray for everybody uh, once they get in here. You know, uh, so anyhow, you guys just uh, any questions about the lesson and while we we're waiting. Anybody wants to add anything or? I'm just waiting for the other classes to come in.
Good morning and happy Sabbath. Uh, we would like to welcome you to our divine worship as we sing songs for the Lord this morning. Um, we invite you to sing with us our songs and praises this morning centered on the cross. It says at the cross, 
we see his humble heart. At the cross, we see, we saw his amazing grace. And at the cross, we were stumped, forgiven. So before that, let us have a word of prayer. Most gracious, kind, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this beautiful Sabbath that you have given us. We pray, Father, that you continue to bless us today as we sing songs for you. May your angels will sing with us so that our voices will be heard in that heavenly throne. We pray for those who are watching us and join us online. We pray, Father, that you bless them, Lord, as you bless us today. We entrust everything into the hand. We give you all the praises and all the thanks. Forgive us again for our sins. Make us your holy thine. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first song is At the Cross. Let us all sing. Church hymnal, hymn number 159. Dearest and best For a world of lost sinners 
Amen, amen. And the participants, please gather at the back on this side. Participants for the divine worship. Good morning and happy Sabbath. I would like to welcome all of you to our youth Sabbath today where the youth and the young at hearts are gonna be leading out. Um, I'm so happy to be here today and I just would like to welcome all of the people watching on Facebook and YouTube as well. And for an, our announcements, I would just like to call Sister Lizelle. As I said, I'm the old version of Crystal. So our announcements, um, the, the Echoes will have a practice right after the service because we have a special Sabbath. Next Sabbath, we'll be going to be uh, ordaining two of our junior elders next Sabbath. And um, for the FAASDA, for, for the Filipino American Association of Seventh day Adventists here in Florida, so our uh, camp meeting will be on September 27 to 29. So I already have um, received some um, email from Orlando Group that the Jacksonville chapter will be doing the Sabbath school. So we're gonna, do, we're gonna bring a live Sabbath school in Camp Kalakwa on September. So, and also accommodations are already allocated to us. And if you have decided to come, please let me know so we can um, uh, give you what your accommodation during the camp meeting at Camp Kalakwa. Uh, we didn't receive anything about the speaker yet. They're still working on that one. So we're excited that uh, we're going to be gathering at Camp Kalakwa on September 27 to 29 for the FAASDA. And of course, there's the camp meeting um, for the Florida camp meeting will be on April um, April 19, right? So um, it's either we're going to close the church or we're going to go there. We haven't decided yet before we used to do uh, live streaming the divine worship. So Camp Kalakwa, Florida uh, conference camp meeting will be on April uh, 19. And is there any other? Oh, yeah, there's going to be a Sabbath school council meeting next Sabbath uh, per Sister Melody. And there's adventurers will have a camp tonight. Uh, there's a camping, right? Tonight. What time? At four. Okay. All right. So I did that. April 19 to 21, to be exact. That's the Amplify camp meeting at Camp Kalakwa. And if you wish to go, uh, normally we just go on the Sabbath. Um, there is a Wednesday group that's still meeting in, this, in the church, but the Nonales group is, um, they don't have the, they don't have the, um, they cannot meet at this time because the Nonales is going uh, outside. Um, they're gonna be visiting some families. So only the church here on Wednesdays. Okay, I think that's it. That's all for the announcement. Any other announcements, Pastor? All right. Thank you. To prepare our hearts and minds for our worship today, I'll just have a few words to say. What mighty praise belongs to you, O God. You are the God of our salvation, answering our prayers with the mighty deeds and forgiving our sins with endless love. You are the hope of the whole world. We will fulfill the promises we've made to you in the company of your people in this sanctuary where you meet us. So come and worship all you who love and serve the Lord, outsiders and insiders, old timers and newcomers, the young, old, and the in-between. Come as you are. For this is, the, is God's house, a house of prayer for all people, and God welcomes each one who comes. Let us come and worship him together.
Um, let us sing, Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Yes. Sure. in your church hymnal hymn number 312 near the cross merciful and gracious Father above. Lord, we thank you for the Sabbath day, and we thank you for this weekend in which we can remember your life, your death, and your resurrection. Lord, as we have this service, we ask that your Holy Spirit be with us. Please bless each and every person here. Thank you, Lord, for your loving grace. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, and in Jesus' name we pray. You may all be seated.
the children will be doing a 13th Sabbath presentation, but uh, they're going to be calling. They're going to be getting your offering first. So um, this quarter, we have learned about the creation. So uh, the children will be uh, doing their memory verses, and we're going to be singing some songs about creation today. So I'm so proud of these children. They've been practicing. Um, where's our pianist? Brother Ralph. Brother Ralphie. <laughs> okay. So we're going to be singing first, God made them all. And also they, ha they have learned about, just today, they have learned about Zacchaeus. And they, they know about the tax collector, bad and good tax collectors in the Bible. So we've learned a lot um, about also Adam and Eve and Moses. So this quarter is really all fun and learn about Jesus. Okay, you ready? God made them all, big and small, the sun, the sun and the moon, the raindrops fall, the blue, blue sky, the deep blue sea. God made them all for you and me. God made them all, big and small, the sun and the moon, the raindrops fall, the blue, blue sky, the deep blue sea. God made them all for you and me. Amen. And this time... They're going to be saying their memory verses, okay?
God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1, verses 1. Amen. If we, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all righteousness. First John 1, 1, verse 9. Take off your sandals for the place you are standing is holy ground. Exodus 3, verse 5. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Genesis 2, verse 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only forgotten son that also ever believed in him should not perish that have everlasting life. John 3, 16. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You making me? I sure does want. Huh? Psalms 23. 111. What was the one? Nine one one. Do it now. I give half of Do it now. Okay. Do it now. Do it now. I give half of my logistics to the poor. Luke nineteen eight. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Psalm 156. Come follow me and I will send you out to fish for people. Matthew 419. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. John 737. Amen. God is, is love. love. First, huh? John Good. 4, huh? 8. Eight. God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Genesis 1, verse 27. Okay, at this time, we're going to sing our second song, which is the, the seventh day. Six days we have to work and play, the seventh is for Jesus. On his holy day, for it belonged to Jesus. Count one, two, three, four, five, six for us. One, two, three, four, five, six for us. One, two, three, four, five, six for us. The seventh is for Jesus. Six days we have to work and play. The seventh is for Jesus. We rest upon his holy day, for it belongs to Jesus. Count. One, two, three, four, five, six for us. One, two, three, four, five, six for us. One, two, three, four, five, six for us. The seventh is for Jesus. Amen. It's all about. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, children. Good morning, church, and have your Sabbath. Today's offertory for the local. Today's offertory is the local church budget. I remember it was like yesterday. I got a call from a close friend saying that they had gotten an incredible job in an incredible city. That would be their dream come true. I celebrated with my friend while also feeding, feeling the sting of pain from my own disappointment from recently being rejected from yet another job from which I was qualified yet was not found worthy to possess. Disappointment and rejection can be hard things to deal with. One thing that God taught me and my family during that season of our lives, what, lives was that Though it may not be my turn for the blessing of my dream job, it is always my turn to serve God and those around me by doing my best no matter what position I'm in. One thing that has blessed me and many others during tough times is the support, is the support local churches offer to those who are struggling just to make it happen, just to make it. I've been in a small group Bible study where other members prayed for me and supported me in many ways, both with physical needs and spiritual needs. Today's offering will go to support our local church budget, which supports ministries that are the heartbeat of our church all week long, not just on Sabbath. The Lord Jesus himself said it, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Can the deacons please collect the offerings? Shall we all stand?
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the offerings that we have before you. Please bless it. And Lord, as we continue on, please help us learn more about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may all be seated. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Oh, am I preaching to Laodicea? Are we uh, uh, asleep? Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Okay, we are alive. That is good. That's what I like to hear. <clears throat> uh, so it's now time for us to have our congregational prayer. Uh, but before I begin, uh, there was a verse that was on my heart. It was uh, Psalms 107, verses 8 and 9. It says, Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of man. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Now, we're all longing for something. We're all hungry for something. We can eat regular food. We can uh, strive for the things that's here on this earth. But the Lord and the God that we serve says, Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So uh, with that in mind, is there anything that, any um, prayer requests out there in the congregation today? Yes, Sister Cruz. And for women? Renee? Okay. Healing? Okay. Is there any uh, silent requests out there? Okay. Uh, with that being said, um, I encourage you guys, if you guys uh, to kneel where you are as we get ready to sing our prayer song. But if you have a special burden on your heart that you'd like to bring to the Lord, you can uh, feel free to join me up front here. Our Father and our God, our Lord and our King, we come before you right now on bended knee and we come just to say thank you. Lord, you've been a good God. You've always been a good God. And I thank you, Lord, that you've been revealing to yourself day by day, glory by glory, just a little bit more of yourselves to us. We thank you, Lord, that you've taken us safely through another week, that you've protected us in our goings and our comings, that we can be able to convene here in your sanctuary on the Sabbath day, a day of rest, a day of joy, and a day of gladness. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us this day to be able to rest from all of our works, to be able to focus on you, on growing in you, on learning more about you and how to relate properly to you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this memorial of creation and also a reminder of redemption in just in the same way that we had no part to play in either creation or redemption that she were the God who will deliver us and to bring us through without any part in ourselves. We cannot work for it, Lord, but we know that we can leave it all in your hands, that you have already done it for us. Lord, we ask that as we come before you now, please cleanse us of every sin. We are aware of all of our infirmities. We're aware of our shortcomings, Lord, but we know that despite that, that you are the God who shed your blood on the cross for us, that you died, that we may live. Lord, we pray that that blood may be appointed to us as a propitiation for your, our sins. We ask that you cleanse us, Lord, that we can have unhindered communion between us and you. Father, you know the burdens that's on our hearts. You've seen all the hands of the silent prayer requests that were risen. 
Father, I pray that you please show up and show out in our lives. Lord, we come to you and we ask you the, uh, to answer our prayer requests. Not because we think that you can, but because we know that you will. Because you are a God that has shown us time and time again and given us example after example that you long to hear from us, that you want us to come and bring all of our burdens unto you so that you will be able to answer them. I pray, Father, that you'll give us ears to hear your voice. I pray, Lord, that you'll touch our eyes and allow us to see your handiwork in our lives. I pray, Father, that you'll be able to lift our eyes up to when our salvation, to, to lift our eyes up to from whence our salvation comes, Father, and allow us to stop focusing on the things of this world so much that you get drowned out. I pray, Father, that you will create in us a new heart, a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within us. And I pray, Father, most of all, that you will please help us to develop a loving relationship with you. Because you, Lord, are not just an idea, but you are a person. And you long to have us know you as you know us. I pray, Heavenly Father, for Sister uh, Renee, who needs healing. Father, I don't exactly know all of the details about that, but I know that you healed everybody when you were here on this earth. I know that you spent more time healing than you did preaching because you, Lord, are in the ministry of saving lives. I pray, Lord, that you'll have your healing hand over her right now and that you'll heal her of her infirmities. I pray not just for Renee, but I pray for also everyone here and who are listening that need healing, whether it be emotional, physical, spiritual. I pray, Father, that you will just please touch us with your hands, Lord so that we can be able to be made whole. I pray for a very special, in a very special way for Brother Jaime, who will be giving the message today. Father, I pray that you will please put your words in his mouth. I pray, Lord, that your glory may be shined through. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we may be able to have a better and a deeper understanding of who you are. I pray, Lord, that you please help us to draw nearer to you as we progress in this service. Please be with us now, Lord. For we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. This week we're celebrating Easter in remembrance of Jesus Christ's death for our sins. This song is about forgiveness and how God, and even if we let God down, he will still forgive us.
ancient grace At times I may go weak And feel a bit discouraged Knowing that someone somewhere Can do a better job for who am I to serve you? I know I don't deserve you. And that's the part that burns in my heart and keeps me hanging on. I ask you how many times will you pick me up when I keep on letting you down? And each time I will fall short of your glory, how far our forgiveness abounds. And you answer, my child, I love you. And as long as you're seeking my face, you'll walk in the power of my daily sufficient grace. You so patient with me, Lord. As I walk with you, I'm learning what your grace really means. The price that I could never pay was paid at Calvary. So instead of trying to repay you, I'm learning to simply obey you. And that's the part that burns to you for all that you've given to me. I ask you how many times will you pick me up when I keep on letting you down? Good morning and happy Sabbath. Our scripture reading for this morning is found in the book of Revelation chapter 3, 14 to 22. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish, you have, I wish you were either one of the other, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are rich, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, so you can become rich and white clothes to wear, so you can over cover your shameful nakedness and self to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person. And they with me to the one who is victorious. I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them 
hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Before I begin, if you'll just bow your heads with me as I say a word of prayer. Our merciful and gracious Father above, thank you, Lord, for this Sabbath day. Lord, as I present this message, I ask that you help me to present it in a way that represents you. Help me to reflect your character and your will. You have placed this message on my heart, and I pray that the delivery of it is to your satisfaction. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to read it one more time, not all the way through. Uh, I'm only going to read up to verse 17. So, and the angel of the church of Laodicea write, the amen, the faithful, true faithful witness, the beginning of of the creation of God says this, I know your deeds that you are neither hot nor cold. I would, I would that you were hot or cold because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit thee out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy, I have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched miserable, poor, blind, and naked. And so the reason why this uh, became a topic for me was as I walk around and work, I'm oftentimes thinking about the Bible. And, for, and whenever I'm asked to preach, I come up with a lot of different topics. And I narrow it down as the week goes on. But for some reason, Laodicea came to my mind. It came to my mind very early. I usually don't make the decision of what I'm going to preach until Friday. But it came very early. I believe it was Sunday. It's the one day of the week that I'm awake early. And for whatever reason, this was what was placed in my mind. And I tried to think of other messages, but the Lord kept bringing it back. What is the point of me having to preach this message is what I kept asking the Lord. Why do you keep bringing this back to my mind? Well, the first thing that we need to know about Laodicea is this represents this time period that we're living in today. It says here that they're neither hot nor cold. It says that their their station in life was that they were wealthy and they needed nothing. Now, if you want to think about the people that we are today versus the people that were not too far away from now, things have changed a lot. The things that we have, the comforts that we have, were not uh, the luxuries that people had previous to us. For us to have a cell phone in our pocket, to be able to get whatever information we want, is a thing that was just in someone's mind 50 years ago. When I was in college the first time, I didn't have a cell phone. And when I did get a cell phone, it really didn't do anything other than call people and send text messages. So when you think about the wealth of knowledge that we have today, and the wealth that we basically have individually, we have similarities. And what this wealth does to us is it makes us forget the things that we need to prioritize. It says you are neither hot nor cold. Have you ever found yourself on your phone just like scrolling? You're not thinking about anything important, just I'm on my phone. What happened to your day? 30 minutes passes, an hour. It can be a long time. And so when you think about the church of Laodicea, they were wealthy. 
they only had one problem, and that was with their water supply. Now, you might be thinking, what's wrong with having lukewarm water? I like to drink bottles of water that are lukewarm, room temperature. But in this case, there's, a little, there's two things that I found. And one was it had to do with hospitality. Now, when you, someone comes to your home and you offer them a, a refreshment, you're either going to offer them a cold beverage or a hot beverage. If, if you were to offer them a lukewarm beverage, it meant you weren't really trying to meet their needs. Right? Because during this time, the only water they had came from aquifers. And this is where the second one comes in. They had two different aquifers. One in the north and one from the south. One was hot water and one was cold water. Uh, hot water from a spring and cold water from the mountain, from what I read. And so the importance of this is what happens to water if it's room temperature for too long? Coming down an aquifer that may have been contaminated by whatever it may be. It can carry disease. Hot water from a spring won't be diseased. The heat from the spring will keep it from changing colors, will keep from certain bacteria from uh, surviving. But once it turns lukewarm, because these aquifers were about six miles long, in its travel from its original location to the city of Laodicea, it would lose its temperature. So if it was cold to begin with, by the time it got there, it was warm. If it was hot to begin with, by the time it got there, it was lukewarm. And the problem that it would have is that once it got there, you're going to hold it in a place. Then you're going to take it and bring it for yourself to drink. And one of the things that I found is that the longer that you held it in a lukewarm state, the more likely you will get sick from it. If you've ever seen a swimming pool that no one's taken care of, how long does it take before it starts to turn green? Not very long if people have used it. What does it mean when it turns green? It means whatever bacteria, urine, whatever it may be, has been in there for so long, the heat from the sun has been on it for so long that it's begun to change. All these little growths have become something. So for me, Someone who was physically poor and had nothing, I was looking to get out. I was looking for more. And so what ended up happening is it became a funny parallel to my spiritual well-being. Because I had been searching for the Lord, and when I found him, I wanted more. I wasn't satisfied with where what I was at. And I wanted everything I could have as far as being spiritually blessed. And so whenever I, when I think of blessed are those who are poor in spirit, it first takes knowing your condition before you can reach out to the one that can help you. So if you have a relationship, if you're able to see your own spiritual well-being. Am I wretched? Am I miserable? Am I poor? Am I blind? Am I naked spiritually? If you're able to see these things, then you can approach God and say, Lord, I want better. I want you to remove me from this place. And the Laodiceans were so comfortable with their wealth, with not needing the things of that God can give them, they ended up just thinking, I'm okay, right where I am, right here, and right now. But when you go through all the Beatitudes, it's a cause and effect. All of it really required you to know who you are spiritually. Because if I were to say, blessed are the meek, 
Why would the meek inherit the earth? Because the meek are submissive to God. If you're meek and lowly in heart, you're going to be submissive to the one that's not meek. And that's Jesus. But if you are blind and spiritually, what is it that you need to gain sight? Hebrews 11 says, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. So if you can't see spiritual things, you have to approach the one who can show them to you. You're not going to be able to physically see all the miracles of God, but he can tap you on the shoulder and say, I need you to look in this direction. I need you to see what's going to happen over here. But once you're too comfortable in the state that you're in, in the, the state, stature that you have, you won't be looking. You'll be looking at your cell phone, scrolling through whatever it may be. And I like to compare it to a parable that Jesus gave in Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, uh, it's verses 9 through 14, and it says, Now he also told this parable to come to some people who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and view others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and began praying in this regard to himself. God, I thank you that I am not like the other people swindlers, crooked, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing some distance away, was even unwilling to raise his eyes towards heaven, but was beating his chest, saying, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. I tell you this. Uh, I tell you, this man went to this house justified rather than the other one. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. And so it shows the kind of attitude that the people of Laodicea could have had. They were wealthy. They had everything they needed. But the way that they looked at themselves or the people around them could have been similar to the way that this Pharisee viewed the tax collector. And so the main question there is, how do you view the people around you? How do you view yourself? If you yourself see that you are poor spiritually, are you in a position to be able to say someone else is poor spiritually? And so, uh, going back to the message to the Laodiceans, in verse 19, it says, Those whom I love I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens this door, I will come and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit has to say to the churches. And so the very first thing he said was, to whom I love, I rebuke and I discipline. The purpose of rebuke and discipline is for change to happen. If you're in a place where you have no idea what's happening to yourself spiritually, sometimes you need that reminder. Sometimes you need a little bit forceful of a reminder. And so Ellen White had something to say, and she said, much excellent labor was bestowed upon the La Laodicean church. To them was given the exhortation be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. But the church did not follow up 
the work begun by God's messengers. They heard, but they failed to appropriate the truth to themselves. To carry out the instruction given to them, the results that followed is the result always sure to follow the rejection of the Lord's warnings and entreaties. In every age, the Lord has sent messages to point out the right way. And just as surely as men have united and walk in contrary to the plain word of God, so surely have they been used by Satan to carry out these purposes. And so the purpose of this message is to remind everyone, how do you see yourselves? Do you see yourself as spiritually rich or spiritually poor? What do you need in your life so that you can be closer to Jesus? Also, it's how do we view our church? Is there complacency within our church? Is there complacency within our circle here in the church? Because of all the places that I've been, and I've been uh, blessed to be a Bible worker for three different churches. I haven't been a pastor or pastoral staff of another three churches. And each one was very different from the other. And what I've come to find is that the longer our church has been going, the easier it is for people to forget the purpose of why we're here. What is the purpose of the church? Why are we sitting in these pews? Uh, the spirit of prophecy in its very first two lines of the book of Acts of the Apostles. It says the, ch the church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men. It was organized for service and its mission to carry the gospel to the world. And there are so many times during my ministries in which I'd find that a church would be unwilling to go out and give the gospel to their neighbor. Would be unwilling to go and to be a part of the church service or trainings or whatever the church may provide. But at the same time, the church could be failing us. How many of you were baptized but never received any kind of discipleship training? If you can't go out and give a Bible study, the church has failed you. And that complacency may be sitting within you. The church's focus should always be to get us to a point where we're comfortable opening our Bibles and sharing a message, no matter how small or big, with the people around us. And it, it, you could see it through the different parts of the church, whether it be through leadership or whether it be through people sitting in the pews. The people will ask, we want midweek. And the leaders will say yes or no. And when a church already has a midweek, how many people are actually going? It's a two-way street. If the church is complacent, the services for the people are lacking. If a church is not complacent, sometimes the people are lacking to be there. And so we always have to ask the question in the churches that I've been to is, what is the spiritual uh, recognition of this church? What needs do they have and how can we best serve them? Because you'll often see through the leadership what it is that is lacking. Uh, I was ordained as a deacon uh, almost 10 years ago. And in my service as a deacon, 
I began to understand the importance of the things that a deacon does. The list of duties include upkeep of the church, maintaining its property. Uh, so for this church, it would be setting up our equipment, setting up our signboard in the front, all these little decorations we have. It's a deacon and deaconess's job. Visitation. Baptisms and communi communions. Identifying needs of the community. But oftentimes I would see the other deacons as I would be laboring would only be doing one thing. I want to be part of the collecting of the offering. And I'm satisfied just collecting the offering. And I could remember a time in which we were having a baptism. And the hot water heater for the baptismal pool was broken. And the temperature outside was below 30. And so all we could do was go to the water heater and collect buckets of water and try and increase the temperature of the pool. Of the handful of deacons that we had, only two of us were actually doing this work. And it took about two hours of bailing hot water into a baptismal pool to get it to a point where you're freezing enough that you can get under the water. But had we had any help from the other deacons, maybe it would have taken a little lot less time. And so the purpose of me saying this is we all have responsibilities and duties. Where have you fallen? What are the things that you're doing to help our church? If you're a deacon and all you're doing is collecting offering, what can you do to be a bigger part of the church? What services can you provide? that can help the church to grow. Can you teach how to give a Bible study? Can you reach out to the person next to you? When you see someone that's in your pew that regularly sits there and they're not there, do you reach out to them? This is not just for the deacons. And when you watch over the elders, the elders are the ones that really run the church. Because the pastor's not always going to be there, especially in my experience uh, in the Philippines, you can have like eight churches under one pastor. And so the running of every church was up to the deacons and the elders. If the elder was not in charge of the, the, the Sabbath, then everything would fall apart. The pastor always had to rely on the elders to be his right hand people. And <clears throat> I can tell you from experience that it's hard to delegate responsibility. It's really hard because you have to trust the people that you're working with in order to delegate responsibility. But if you are that person that doesn't know how to do it, then you're going to be doing everything all this stuff that's set up, how many people set it up? One, two. Of all of the different services that we have in the church, how many of us are taking a part of it? How many elders are leading it? <clears throat> we become complacent. We become lukewarm. And we need to wake up. This weekend is a celebration of Jesus dying and resurrecting. But here we are still doing the same thing we were doing a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. However long it may have been since the last time you were fully active in the church. The most successful churches that I've seen are ones that are active with 
other members. If you look at our Sabbath school, it's supposed to be a place of learning. The more people participate, the more of a different point of view we can see. It's like a potluck. If the only person bringing food to the potluck is the host, potluck failed. All you got is one meal. And that's what often happens in the Sabbath school is the Sabbath school teacher is going to keep standing up here and talking and talking and talking. All he did was feed these people his point of view. And then certain other churches where in the Sabbath school, you'll have a handful of very strong, successful members that read their Bible, that read the quarterly. And they always like to talk. Always. The person up front starts to ask a question, and you know who's going to answer. Every time, brother over there, sister right over here, I don't have to answer. I can be complacent. And so sometimes you have to ask the question, what can we do to remove the complacency? Sometimes you have to make a class smaller. Sometimes you have to ask people to be the leader of the group. You like to talk, please teach the class. Because if this were a potluck and only five people were bringing, but there's 50 people eating, potluck is not good. No one's coming back. And so we have to ask ourselves, whenever we're doing something for the church, what can we do to involve everybody? How can we stop people from being complacent and lukewarm? And the answer is finding a way to wake everyone up. We each have our own message. We each are, have our own background. I can reach certain people that you can't reach. But within the church, we should be able to reach each other. But how often are we taking the time to reach our hand out? Oh, my brother is sick. Have I called him? Have I taken the time to pray for him? Oh, my sister is going through some kind of problem. What can I do to help them? Oftentimes, you go missing from church for two weeks, you won't even get a phone call. And so what I'm asking for us today is that we find a way to be hot. We gain that fire for Jesus so that we can reach the people around us and so that we can be a healthier church. What things do you want to see in the church? Are the things that we're doing enough? Do you need more services? Are we doing too much? These are questions that need to be asked and things in which only the people sitting in the pews can demand. Have you not been trained? Do you want to be trained? Has anybody even offered it to you? Start demanding the things that you really need. Start saying, I want to be on fire for Jesus, but I need to be trained to give a Bible study. Start saying, I need to do more within the church service so that I can feel a bit more part of the church. Start saying that I know my brother has been missing for a bit. Can I get his phone number? We all have to start somewhere. And the first place is to look at where you are and to figure out, where am I? Am I poor? Am I blind? Am I naked? I need to go to Jesus so that I can stop being blind and naked. But I want to leave you with uh, not a rebuke. It's a question. How
can you grow? Spiritual. What is it going to take for you to stand up and do something for Jesus? We're supposed to be remembering his life, his death, and his resurrection. Doesn't that make you feel something? He died for you. He resurrected, and he's petitioning for you. But here we are. We need to look at ourselves. And we need to say, I want more. Because that's what he wants. So my plea is for us to not be Laodiceans. We need to go and figure out what we can do to be better. We have all the things at our disposal, but we need to ask more. We need to demand more. Because what we have right now is not enough for him to come back. And so I plead with you. Find a way to catch fire. Pray. Read your Bible. Spend time with someone who can help you get closer to God. Because if we don't, we fall into that trap of being lukewarm. And I, for one, don't want to be lukewarm. I want to see Jesus return in my lifetime. And what it will take is for us to find that fire. Stop with the things that are distracting us. We're wealthy and so many things that are unimportant. But how can you be wealthy in the word of the Lord? How can you be wealthy in his blessings? Because that's what we need. And that's our message for today. Thank you, Brother Jaime, for that wonderful message that's reminding us to wake up and to give ourselves our best to the Master. So let us all stand and we will sing our, our closing hymn, hymn number 572, Give of Your Best to the Master.
merciful and gracious Father above, thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us life in which we can use to reflect your character, that we can use for your service. And I pray, Lord, that we find a way to remain hot, that we can remain on fire for you so that you can come sooner. Lord, we ask that as we continue on with our week, as we begin, we continue to remember your life, your death, and your resurrection, that it sparks something within us. Help us to want more for you. And help us to find a way to reach the people around us. Thank you, Lord, for your loving grace. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us remain standing as we will sing, Soon Jesus Will Return. Amen. 